Good news, you'll never have to build a sidebar component from scratch for your projects again, thanks to ShadCM. He's gone ahead and added in a load of example sidebars, as well as 25 new components to help you customize these as much as you want. I'm not talking about simple sidebars either. He's got them, but he's also got ones that look like VS Code sidebar, Google Calendar, Notion, an email client sidebar, and a load more cool features too. So let's go ahead and take a look because the attention to detail is insane. So you can see these examples on ui.shadcn.com slash blocks here. If you haven't seen blocks before, they're essentially full page layouts. You can go ahead and install into your application. You get the code added and it adds in all of the components that that code needs as well for you. So what you can see here on building blocks, we've got sidebar 01. So this is our first example. And this is what we would call a simple sidebar, which is insane because it looks really nice. It has some really cool features. We've got this header here. It's one of those that sort of moves the content as you pull out the sidebar. It's responsive as well. So if I go ahead and make this smaller, what you can see is it actually renders as an overlay instead because obviously you don't want your content too squished here if it was on that small screen and the other cool thing as well is it even has this trigger on the side here to pull up that sidebar too so honestly pretty insane that this is called a simple sidebar as you can see we also have that search item there and then we've also got the navigation here grouped by sections we've got the getting started here installation project structure and then just sort of the list of the individual pages that you could click on now this sort of simple example is going to be sort of used for the next few ones but just with some varying features so this one down here has collapsible sections instead so it's the same thing but then these headers here can be clicked on and collapsed like that the next one here is going to have a sidebar with sub menus. So again, it's going to be similar, but these are now sort of sub menus as we've got sort of the nested bit here with the line here showing it's a sub item. As we keep going, you've got a floating sidebar with sub menus. So this one's a bit of a different style here. As you can see, if we actually scroll up here, this one takes up the full page layout. This one down here is a floating sidebar. So it's sort of in its own nice looking container here, but the same sort of feature set as we've seen before. This one's a sidebar with collapsible submenus, the submenus we just saw, but now you can collapse them like you could with the other groups. As we keep going, this one here is a sidebar with submenus as dropdowns. As you can see here, you could click on these and you can have a dropdown menu within the sidebar. And the other cool thing about this one is it has a sidebar footer, which you can add in a nice call to action or a user menu, which we'll see in a bit. It's also a really good time though for me to make a call to action for you to subscribe to this channel. As we keep going down though, this one here is a sidebar that collapses to icons. So this one looks really similar to the OpenAI sort of sidebar that you see if you're on the API. As you can see here, what we've got is the playground item, and this just collapses to a really nice sort of icon style one here. As I said, it really suits something like that OpenAI playground as we've got here, and it's sort of modeled after that. As you can see, it's got the playground, the models, documentation. But the other cool thing about this one in the sidebar footer, we have a really nice user menu. So you could have the username down here. You can click on this, and then you can have those user options like sign out, billing, and all of those different things as well. The eighth sidebar is an example of an inset sidebar. So you can see this one almost sort of wraps the application with this border on the edge here. And as you click that, it pulls it out. But then it also has secondary navigation as well here. You can see we've got that same sort of collapsible style of navigation that we have before. We've got the projects menu. And we've also got these items down here that are then sort of sticky down here. So you can have in your support and your feedback routes. So routes that you want the user to be able to get to quickly, but they're not too important. So you might want to put them in the footer. As you can see here with the example of support, feedback, maybe a contact us or something like that. And again, we still have this user menu in the footer here. Next one is collapsible nested sidebars. It's insane. You can go ahead and add this to your application with literally one command because this is essentially a full on email client template, which is absolutely mental. It's crazy. He's put that much work into all of these examples. What you can see here is this sidebar here is for all of our menu or all of our emails that we've received. We can click on this. It's going to go ahead and change this from drafts to junk, all of that. If I go ahead and minimize this and then we open this up, you can see it's going to open that sidebar for us. This one's really cool because obviously these icons stay on the side when the sidebar is collapsed. It's also responsive, so if it's small enough, they don't stay on the side. And then you can open this up as a normal overlay menu instead. Just really cool. And just this is where these sidebar examples start to get really powerful. As we keep going, though, you can see we've got a sidebar in a popover. So this one's actually showing down here. I believe this is a sidebar as well, or at least it's a menu as we can use. But this one is like a Notion sort of example. So you sort of have your sidebar header here with your sort of common routes. So you can have the search, the home, the inbox. And then you can see we've got the more sticky header here. And then we've also got these more. And you can see as we scroll down, we can also have personal life. You can expand these as that has sub menus. Absolutely crazy sort of the amount of effort he's put into these examples. So this is sort of your Notion style one. So keep going. This one's like a bit like VS Code's one. So it's a sidebar with a collapsible file tree. Just insane. As I said, that these are free as well. Click this, we can get app API. So this is like a Next.js application. And you see, we've got a sidebar showing us how we could go ahead and install that or use it and build it in our application. 
And the next one here is a sidebar with a calendar. So this one's like a Google Calendar. As you can see, we have this sidebar here. Again, the attention to detail and the amount of different examples is so cool. And as I said, this is like Google Calendars. We have the calendar here. Then we've got the calendars that you can pick with the checkboxes here and then the favorites and other things like that. So it's a really good example of how you could do that. A sidebar in a dialogue. So what if you don't want a sidebar on your page? What if you want it somewhere else? This one here is within a dialogue. It's almost like a window management system that we've built out here. So you can open the dialogue. It's got the sidebar on the side as we used to. And this one's a bit of a simple sidebar, but it's in a dialogue as you can see. You've got a sidebar on the right. So you're not limited to just having it on the left side there. You can have it on the right as well. And as you can see, it behaves the exact same way. Then we also have a left and right sidebar too, which is just crazy. You could use them on both sides. You can see you've got your main navigation here, but then you've also got the calendar sidebar on the right there as well. So as you can see, these are the examples he has on the blocks page. Absolutely crazy how many of them he's actually done. If you click into components as well and then go to sidebar, you can see a few more examples or some of the other examples we've seen. So this one here is that composable sidebar here, as you can see with this menu up here and the collapsible. And as we scroll down, you can see you can add this into your project really easily with one command. We're gonna go ahead and do this in a brand new project. To use CZN, we're going to need a project with ShadCN installed. Now, you may already have one. If you don't, you can go ahead and run pmpm dlx ShadCN and then init. And I'm going to do dash D. You can run this command in any project if it doesn't have ShadCN installed already, or you can just run it without a project and it'll go ahead and set up a Next.js project for you that has ShadCN installed. So you can see here, it says it couldn't find a package.json file. So do you want to start a new project? As I said, you can use this in an existing project. We'll give this one a name of sidebar. Hit enter on that. That's going to create the Next.js project for me. And then we can go ahead and install the sidebar component. So now that that's done, all I need to do is go ahead and CD into the actual application here. And then we can go ahead and install the sidebar block that we want. For that, all you have to do is pmpm dlx or mpx and then shadcn. And then we can do add and then add in the sidebar block that we want or any components that you want. In my case, that sidebar 10 is the one I'm going to want to be using in my application. Hit enter on this. We can go ahead and see what the ShadCN CLI is doing here. It's gone ahead and added in all of the components that we need into our code base for the sidebar example we took a look at. So you can see it's gone ahead and updated my Tailwind config for the ShadCN styles. It's updated the global CSS. It's got the page.tsx. So this is going to be that full block example that we saw. This is where it goes. And we'll take a look at that in a bit. But it's also added in all of the components too. So let's open this up in VS Code. So you can see once we're open in VS Code, we've got the app. Now it's added in a dashboard page for us. And this dashboard page has that full sidebar example we took a look at. I'll go ahead and run this in a minute so you can see exactly what you get from the application. You can also see in components, it adds in the ShadCN UI components that we need for the sidebar. So that's breadcrumb, button, input, and then we've got the sidebar itself. So as you can see, there's a load of different components in this sidebar file. Crazy just how much he did for this. And then you can also see it adds in the sidebar components that we need for the specific block that we got as well. So if I go back to that page up here, you can see it has the app sidebar here. If I go into this component, the app sidebar then uses the sidebar components from the UI folder. So these are sort of your core components. And then the components it actually adds into the components folder itself are sort of the ones that you would build out yourself and customize. So you've got the sidebar header, the sidebar content, and various items like that as well. So let's go ahead and spin this up though and see what this is actually added to our project. Running the dev server then, this is what I've got at the slash dashboard page now. As you can see, it was that block that we were looking at earlier. This is now in my application. I can customize all of this as much as I want. I can change it all out. I can add in new things, customize it completely to my needs, ready for my application. And I've just got a really nice sidebar literally in seconds there. It's really cool how powerful ShadCN is becoming. The last thing I want to do then is just take a look at the documentation just to explain how the sidebar is composed. So you can see here the structure of a sidebar here. We have the sidebar component with the sidebar provider that just handles all of the states. So you're going to need that in your application. You have the sidebar container, a header and a footer, which are the sticky items that are going to be at the top and the bottom. Then you have your sidebar content for that scrollable items. And then you've got your groups, your content, and then your triggers for the sidebar as well. You can see this sort of nice diagram here with the sidebar is the whole thing. You've got the header, which is those sticky items, as I said, the footer, and then you've got the different sidebar elements that you'd actually have in. So here you'd have in your navigation. This is where that user menu that we saw went from earlier. And this is where things like the search input and various other things would go to. You can see the usage. This is a really simple usage. First, you need your sidebar provider. 
then you need the app sidebar component that we took a look at earlier and then you could have your main so this is what you'd actually put in your sort of layout.tsx here and that would go ahead and you'll be ready to use a sidebar and you see this is the simple example here with the sidebar sidebar header sidebar content and various different things and the documentation is really good here it's going to take you through building out your first sidebar so you'd start with a basic one you add in the sidebar you add in the trigger for it so what you want to click on to actually open up the sidebar then you create a sidebar component so you can put all of this in and sort of customize it as much as you want you can add a sidebar menu here so that's going to be the sidebar group then you define all of the items you want in your navigation and a load of different things like that and this is what you would get out of that first sidebar that you've just created a really nice simple example so you can see there's even more example of sidebars in the actual sidebar documentation itself you can see i'm only about what a quarter of the way through this documentation so you really do want to take a look at this just to see how you could build out the perfect sidebar for your application crazy the amount of detail that's in this documentation crazy the amount of detail that's in the sidebar components and the examples as well and it's so well explained with these diagrams here too so i highly recommend you go check this out if you haven't seen chad cn before you're really missing out so check that out too check out chad cn on twitter too go ahead and give him a follow if you love his work there we go. Shatien is constantly adding new components to just make our lives so much easier as developers, allowing us to focus on the code that actually matters. If you want to check out a video on the Shatien CLI, which we used in this video, go ahead and watch this one here. Otherwise, check out the video that YouTube is recommending to you, which is this one here. As always, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. See you in the next one. Happy coding.